What's up y'all, Will Cooper here, Hunt Stand team member. It's the beginning of November. We just got out here to our deer hunting property in Central Texas that we call the farm. And we're hoping that the deer are gonna start acting ruddy. October was really, really weird. Deer were just kind of all over the place, hard to pattern. So now we think they're finally getting into what they're used to and what we're used to them doing. So we're gonna see what happens, but I wanted to take a quick minute to kind of talk to y'all about something we're gonna be doing over here at Hunt Stand over the course of November. We've got some serious whitetail hunting machines across the nation that they're gonna be working on putting some deer on the ground. They're gonna be working on getting some content that we can hopefully show to y'all over the next few weeks. We're hoping to see some big mature bucks start to hit the ground before long. So. What we're gonna do to get this thing kicked off is we're actually gonna hit the rewind button and go hop up in a tree stand with our very own Josh Dalkey as he's chasing after some velvet giants in Kentucky at Salt River Outfitters. And we're gonna go get up there and see if we can watch him put an arrow through a big buck. One more thing, y'all. If you haven't yet, make sure you download the Hunt Stand app today. We do have a free version. We've got a pro tier. And then brand new this fall, we've got our pro whitetail version that has some brand new features specific to whitetail hunting to help you maximize your time in the woods, pick your times a little bit better. We've got rut maps, we've got whitetail activity forecasts, and we've got a few more features that if you wanna see them, click the link down below so you can upgrade to pro whitetail today. So I'm gonna quit rambling and we're gonna to get to the hunt with our man, Josh Dalkey. All right, September 2nd, just rolled into Louisville or Louisville or however the heck they say it around here. Archery season opens tomorrow here in Kentucky, the third Saturday. The weather's hot, it's supposed to be raining the forecast, but really hoping to maybe run into a velvet whitetail down here. I've never shot one. Shot a couple of velvet muleys, but never a whitetail. So I'm gonna roll here and uh, try to get to camp after I run some errands and see what the guys have to say. All right, got me some of the essentials. Scent control, bug control, bow control, and thirst control. So here we are, Northern Kentucky, day before deer opener, archery opener. Just got into camp here. Pretty sweet camp. Uh, I'll be hanging out with my friends from Yamaha and Whitetail Diaries. They got a sick setup here I'm about to show you in a second. They really got this spot dialed in. They've been doing this hunt for a number of years and looks like a lot of fun, so I'm happy to be here. And uh, when I say the dudes from Yamaha, I'm talking about the main dudes. They're legit hunters they love whitetail hunting they love turkey hunting they love all sorts of hunting and fishing and outdoor stuff and that's a, a lot of what goes into their machines is based on their experiences out here doing what we all love with this hunting thing so should be a interesting four or five days here in kentucky and hopefully we can get some deer moving it is hotter than sin uh hunt stand says it's going to be well 90s 80s 70s uh probably 70s for a low and unfortunately, it looks like we have some rain coming in, or it actually could be a blessing in disguise because it is so hot right now that I wouldn't mind for it to cool off, and I'm sure the deer wouldn't mind either. And as long as it's not crazy thunderstorms, we'll be out there hunting. So let's go check out the camp. Wade, what's the story? How many years has it been? Six years we've been coming to Kentucky for their velvet hunt. This is one of the coolest hunts there is. People always laugh at me because temperatures are going to be in the 90s and you hunt in the evenings only, but the deer are so patternable and they're so big. It's just a great place to come. One of the first things I'm going to do is, unfortunately, spray down my camo. Uh, I really don't like to do that because I'm not talking about scent-free spray. I'm talking about permethrin. Uh, if you're from the south, you're probably familiar with this stuff. You're probably familiar with chiggers. Uh, if you're not from the south, you're at least familiar with ticks, and maybe you're not familiar with this, and you should be, but this stuff will prevent you getting bit by chiggers and ticks, and I can tell you right now that chiggers are hell on earth. I actually was squirrel hunting down here a few weeks ago, got bombed by chiggers. They are horrible. They're almost like getting chicken pox. They're nasty things. They're actually little spiders that bite you. They're so small you can't even see them. But if you spray this stuff on your clothes, it's supposed to prevent any type of chigger bites or ticks because they get on your clothes and they just jump off when they come in contact with this stuff. 
and it lasts for like, well, it says right on here, six weeks or six washings. So once you spray this on your clothes, you can actually continue to wash your clothes and it'll continue to be effective. So with this sight I'm shooting, especially after flying, definitely got to double check the zero. This has our laser rangefinder built into it. So um, I found in the past that one time I flew, the sight was still on, all my pins were still on that I programmed, but the laser had gotten bumped somehow during transit. So I just wanted to make sure that my laser was still on because that's the number one reason you want to use this sight is because you can do everything all in one sweep. Come to full draw, tap the button with your finger, you get the range, the right pin lights up and you can take the shot rather than having to take that extra step of actually using a separate range finder. So looks like everything's dialed other than just some poor shooting on my part. So I got to send some more arrows down range and get a little bit more comfortable and knock the dust off here before I try to go after a deer. Opening day, about to roll out for our first evening hunt. Can't wait. Got Michael Wersig rolling with. He'll be popping in here shotgun anytime now and be rolling out and seeing what we can see. Opening day is like, keep having enough checklist. Let's go. It's uh, about 3.30 p.m. right now. Gets dark somewhere around 8, 8.30. So gonna get out there nice and early. It's about 76 degrees according to Hunt Stand. Feels a lot hotter actually, but cloud cover's helping a little bit. Some rain might be rolling in. Looks like pretty patchy according to the, the radar. I uh, forgot my rain gear, of course, back at camp. So if, if it rains, I'm gonna get wet, but no big deal. I wouldn't mind getting cooled off a little bit out here. But uh, just gonna jump in the Armax, head down the road, and. Uh, Get into that stand nice and early. Bucks have been showing up, believe it or not, even though it's super hot, pretty early, um, as early as 5, 5.30. So hopefully get in there, give it an hour to rest, settle down a little bit, and never know what we're gonna see. It's 4.20 p.m. This buck that we're really hoping to see showed up yesterday on the stealth cam at about 5.40 p.m. So it'd be pretty cool if he repeated that. That's a lot to ask for a, an early season deer to come out that early, especially a big one like him. But uh, you never know. That's the magic of whitetail hunting. You just got to be out here to be a part of it and see how it unravels. So we're going to wait and the wind is good so far. Just excited to see some deer.
waste any time. No, I looked up and I saw that one cross in the back. And every day he had been on the pictures with him. Granted, I only have two days of pictures. <sighs> That escalated quickly. Um, sure enough, those two bucks have been coming in together consistently and they showed up. They showed up later than we anticipated, so I started to kind of nod off a little bit and I was kind of losing my attention. But then uh, Michael said he saw some movement in the trees and sure enough, the young buck came on in. He was already hard horned, let in the big velvet buck. Um, happened real quick. I probably should have waited for him to step forward when I shot, but I feel like the the point of impact was right. It just maybe caught part of his shoulder because his leg was back. But uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna get down here and check for blood in a couple minutes. It's been about 20 minutes and uh, we'll assess from there. Showed up, put on my fancy costume and trick or treat. Okay, so I'm about to go blood trail this deer I just shot. And a uh, really good thing to use in hunt stand for this is the trace path tool. So I'm gonna turn that on right now, and what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna drop a breadcrumb trail to follow me everywhere I go, and it'll leave that trail on the map that I can save. So then we won't be double stepping over areas we already checked. God forbid if we have to check, hopefully we go right to the deer. But in a lot of cases, you know, blood trailing doesn't always go exactly how you want it. So this is just a good way to safeguard, to know exactly where you've been, and maybe where you need to go to try to recover that deer. So this is where the deer was standing when I shot. And as you can see, we were tucked in, hidden real good up in that tree right there. Um, he really had no idea that we were here at all. I felt like I could have done jumping jacks up there. And that's the benefit of getting a good tree stand set up, still leaving some cover around you. For when you're archery hunting like this, it's just so important to have that cover. So these guys did a really good job setting the stand. This is, so much of this hunt is, is really dedicated to the guys who put in all the work. I mean, I've been putting in work back home on my own places, but to be able to come down here and do this and go after a big velvet whitetail and experience some new country, uh, just a real blessing. So we're gonna try to take up this blood trail now and hopefully it leads us to a big velvet buck. Pretty sure it goes right here. Huh? Pretty sure it goes right here. <laughs> no. Wow. Unbelievable. <sighs> Holy smokes, man. What an animal. Wow, just amazing. But all I can say right now is every time I am fortunate to shoot something, really feel like I don't deserve it. And this is certainly one of those cases. This is just a beautiful animal. And we're just lucky to be able to interact with them the way that we do and put meat on our table and memories on the wall. In this case, this velvet is just really incredible. I mean, it is just something else. Uh, I mean, he could have been shedding this velvet tomorrow, but he held it long enough for me. And he's just a gorgeous, gorgeous beast. I'm so thankful. Wow. And he stinks. Man, we're a ways from the rut, but holy smokes, I can smell his scent glands. Can't make it up. I'm just so happy I made a good shot. Uh, that was That was my job on this deal. I mean, we're lucky, I mean, he died down in a nasty creek bottom down here, which is probably where he was betting, actually. I wouldn't be one bit surprised. He was probably going back to some familiar territory. But uh, 
hey, it was it was a little gnarly getting down here, but it didn't take us too long. He was spraying blood. That broadhead did a great job. I was shooting a Sever 2.0 titanium. I've had a lot of su success with that broadhead with uh, crossbow hunting, and now I just did with my compound for the first time. So I like to mix it up, see how different stuff works. Just happened to be using that Sever today, and I'm glad that I was. It, it did exactly what it needed to do, and this deer died quick and ethically. For me to be able to come out here, experience this hunt the way that I have, and be able to share it with you guys really means a lot. Hopefully you're inspired to maybe get after some early season whitetails, no matter how you want to do it. There are opportunities across the country. I've done it in multiple places, both public and private land, but this is my first velvet whitetail. I had one other crack at one a number of years ago in Minnesota at home on public land, and I, I didn't make a good shot that time. So this is kind of my redemption for that incident and uh, super thankful for it. So well, we're gonna go get the machine and get them out of here. You selected deer. Press one if this is correct. If not, press E. In order to check in an antler deer, you will be asked to enter the total number of antler points that it has that are one inch long or longer. That's a good sign. <laughs> That's a good sign. Heck yeah. I always like seeing the tailgate open and people stand around. People stand around. And I was, I was just saying we came in, I was wondering why it got so quiet. Congrats, dude. Thanks a lot, man. Heck yeah. Talk about a big body, man. So I just rolled down in here into the taxidermist, which is uh, just down the road from where we're camping. And Seriously, I had no idea what to expect. I thought it was just going to be our crew and maybe a couple other guys dropping off deer. And I roll in here and it's just a, a mob, a mob of successful deer hunters. And not just successful, but the deer that are here right now and the number of deer that are here right now and the caliber is astonishing to say the least. I'm going to show you guys right now. But this country grows some big deer. It is unbelievable. I don't know what to think. It's a spectacle. All right, y'all, there you go. Josh put an arrow through a freaking awesome buck. Was able to get it done on his very first sit in Kentucky. Pretty jealous myself because this season has been quite the struggle. It's probably been my hardest deer hunting season yet in my life. So hopefully my luck's gonna turn around here. Something's gonna change soon. Get myself a good buck on the ground and we'll see what comes out here in Texas. But, you know, again, just wanna make sure you guys head on over download hunt stand today if you haven't already go upgrade to the pro whitetail i've already been using it pretty heavily this year in fact it pretty much helped helped us determine when we were going to come out to the farm because the whitetail activity forecast was showing us that there were a couple of days this week that were going to be best we had some really good percentages for deer movement deer activity our rut is going to be kicking in here pretty soon so i figured by looking at that it was the perfect time to get out here so I'm going to go get in the deer stand and hopefully get an arrow through a buck here pretty soon. Showed up, put on my fancy costume and trick or treat. <laughs> 